Hello again, Grade 5. This is Chapter 5, where we will be continuing to talk about fractions. I know. So our first section is about rounding fractions and mixed numbers. Now, over here, we're going to be talking about how to round to the nearest half. So there's two options. Well, three, actually. Instead of just the two options, which is round up and round down, there's round up, which is when the numerator is almost as large as the denominator, round to half, which is the numerator is around half the denominator, or we could round down, which is the numerator is much smaller than the denominator and is, well, closer to zero than half. Now we're going to do some practice. Four and seven tenths. So seven ten, you can round it to half, which is five ten, or you can round it to, well, just up, as in you can round it to five, a whole number. But seven ten is closer to five over ten than ten over ten. So we round to half. So it'd be four and a half. Now, seven and one over ten. One over ten is much closer to zero than it is to five over ten, which is half. So we round to, well, just down. It'd just be seven. Now here we have one and seven eighth. Seven is very close to eight i.e. the numerator is very close to the denominator. So naturally, we'd round up, and it'd be 2. We move on to 3 and 2 sevenths. We can round down or to half. Half of 7 is 3.5, which is a little closer than 0, so we're just going to round to half. Here it's 4 and 7 sixteenths. Half of 16 is 8. So 7 sixteenths is very close to half. Therefore, we round to half. Nine and one over three. The thing is one over three is that although it's a little bit closer to one over two, than it is to zero. A lot of people do round it to just zero. So technically it could be this or it could be just this. Two over three on the other hand is always rounded up. Six over seven, six is very close to seven. We round up to just one. 1 and 5 over 9. 5 over 9 is very close to uh, half, so we round to the half. And then 5 and 6 over 11. 6 over 11, half of 11 is 5.5. 6 over 11 is very close to half, therefore we round to half. And 7 and 1 over 4. Well, 1 over 4 is right in the middle of half and 0. But usually for 1 over 4, we just round down. Now, estimating sums and differences of fractions. How do we estimate? Well, when we estimate, we usually do a little bit of rounding which we learned in the last section. So we can round mixed numbers to the nearest half to estimate sums and differences of mixed numbers. And you can use number lines to help you, but you really shouldn't.
because then you'll get used to number lines. And guess what? They don't give you number lines in high school. They don't even give you number lines in middle school. Anyhow, estimate 3 and uh, 3 eighths minus 1 and 1 third. So 3 and 3 eighths would be approximately, well, 3 eighths is closer to 4 eighths or 1 half than uh, 0. So we round the first number or mixed number to 3 and 1 half. And the second one, we can round it to uh, 1 and a half, or we can round it to 1. Because this is something that you end up remembering after a lot of uh, work and uh, equations. 0 0.3 repeated, this is a repeating sign, which means that it's just 0 0.3, 3, 3, and it keeps going on and on, is equal to 1 over 3. And uh, 1 over 2 is equal to 0 0.5. So technically, 1 over 3 is closer to half than, well, it is to 0. So let's just round it to 1 and 1 half. And we subtract, and that's around 2. Now if we actually want to find the exact value of uh, this mathematical sentence right here, well, uh, we're going to have to find the common denominators and all that. But right now, we're on estimating. So let's continue to estimate and do some practice problems. The first question, or well, practice problem over here, gives you a bit of a step-by-step -step process in order to, well, spoon feed you how to do it. Now, four and three-fifths is closer to something than to something. So you can round this four and three-fifths to 5 or to 4 and a half. Now what's 3 fifths closer to? Well, if it's 5, which means rounding to the next, rounding up or rounding to the next number, then it would be 5 over 5. And if it was half, then it'd technically be 2.5 over 5. But most people wouldn't write it like this because, well, you aren't technically supposed to have decimals in the fraction. Now, which one is 3 closer to? 2.5 or 5? It's closer to 2.5. Therefore, 4 and 3 fifths is closer to 4 and a half than to 5. What about 5 and 9 tenths? Well, if we decide to round it to 1 half, then it would be 5 and 5 over 10, which is quite far. So it's better to just round up, since it's only 1 away from, well, the denominator. And then we're going to plug this in, well, plug the estimated or rounded values in place of the original value, so 4 and 3 fifths would be 4 and a half, plus 5 and 9 tenths would be just 6, which would be 10 and a half. So now we move on to the examples where the question does not give us everything that we need, or at least doesn't list out all the steps that we need to go through. First number, 8 and 11 over 16. So 8 and 11 over 16. What is an equivalent fraction to 1 over 2 or 1 half that has a denominator of 16? Well, what's half of 16? 8. So is 11 over 16 closer to 8 over 16 or 16 over 16? Come on, guys. Is 11 closer to 8 or 16? 
it's closer to eight. So it's better to round this down to eight and a half. Now the next number, three and one over six. Now if it's one over something, and that something isn't two or three or one, then well, you round down. So this would just be three. Now what's eight and a half minus three? Well, what's eight minus three, guys? Five. And then there's an extra half, so five and a half. We move on. Three and nine over 11. So nine over 11. What's half of 11? 5.5. So is nine closer to 5.5 or 11? Nine is closer to 11. So we round this fraction, well, mixed number, up into four. What about four and seven tenths? Is seven tenths closer to one half or five tenths? Or is it closer to just one or ten tenths? Is seven closer to five or ten? It's closer to five. So we round this down to four and a half. Now what's four plus four and a half? 4 plus 4 is 8, and then there's an extra half. Now, 5 and 5 twelfths. Half of 12 is 6. 5 twelve is kind of close to 6 twelve. And it's also kind of far from just 0 over 12. So we round the first one to half. Now what about... 2 and 1 over 8. Now what did I say about 1 over something? Where the something isn't 1, 2, or 3? You round down. You just straight round down. So it's 5 and a half minus 2. It's 3 and a half, guys. If you need a visualization, this is a half. This is how it works. However, we've been going through fractions since grade 3, so... Anyhow, if you want to take a break right now, you can go on ahead, because this is between sections. But if you don't want to go on a break, or you have just came back from taking a break, then we're going to move on to adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. Fractions with like denominators are also called like fractions. We have gone through this in grade 4. But don't worry if you've forgotten, because we're going to go over it again. Follow these steps to add or subtract fractions with like denominators. Step 1. Add numerators. Step 2. Simplify. And there is no step three. Technically, it should be add numerators and put, well not put, more like use, put on top of, in essence, use Old denominator. So for 7 over 8 plus 1 over 8, it'd be add numerators, 7 plus 1, which is 8, put on top of or use old denominator, which is still 8. Simplify. Now what's the greatest common factor of 8 and 8? Eight. So if you divide both of those by eight, then it's one over one, which is just one. Technically, if anything is over itself, then it's just one. Say n over n be n any number, 
just equals to 1. That's not L, by the way, that's 1. This is why people don't usually use L unless it's a cursive L in algebra, because it looks like 1. Simplify, so that'd just be 1. Now let's do this again. Subtract 5 over 11 minus 3 over 11. Okay then. So, step 1. Subtract numerators. It's the exact same process, except you subtract instead of add. Please don't add when it's a subtraction sign. Unless there's negative integers involved, but you aren't going to be learning about integers until a few chapters later. Use old denominator. Now, let's do that. Subtract numerators. 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. Now we use the own denominator, and that's 11. 2 over 11. Can we simplify that? They're both prime numbers. <laughs> we really can't simplify that. So it's already simplified, which means that we don't really need step 2. Sometimes you do step 2, sometimes you don't. So here, we are going to have some fun. Now, add or subtract right in simplest form. 5 over 7 minus 3 over 7. What do we know about subtraction? Well, subtracting like fractions. Fractions with like denominators. Whichever one you decide to call it. Because both of those are correct. Well, we subtract the numerators. 5 minus 3 over 7. And we use the old denominator. Equals to 2 over 7. And we can't simplify 2 over 7 because the greatest common factor between 2 and 7 is already just 1. And when you simplify something, it means that after you simplify it, the greatest common factor between the numerator and the denominator is 1. In case you forgot from a few chapters back. Question number two, 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8. What do we remember about, well, what did we just learn, actually, about adding like fractions, or fractions with like denominators? I'm going to call them like fractions for the next few questions. You can say fractions with like denominators. They mean the same thing, but like fractions is shorter. We add the numerator, 1 plus 1, and we use the old denominator. So then we get 2 over 8. And can we simplify this? The greatest common factor between 2 and 8. The factors of 8 include 1, 2, 4, and 8. The factors of 2 include 1 and 2. 2 is the greatest common factor. So we divide both the numerator and denominator by 2, and we end up with 1 over 4. Yay. We continue. 7 over 10 plus 1 over 10. Now, step 1 for addition. Add numerators. 7 plus 1 over, use old denominator, 10. You do not add the denominators. If you want to think about this, let's just say uh, with quarters. Because quarters are usually easier to show. And when you draw them, it doesn't take ages. This is 3 over 4. This is 1 over 4. If you add them, you get 4 over 4. It's still something over 4. You don't magically just have things divided into 8 ghostly pieces. You don't. They're still divided into quarters. They're not divided into eighths. If you want to convert it into eighth, 
then you have to find an equivalent fraction. Not just turn it into 8. Basically, don't change the denominator, guys. Unless you're looking for equivalent fractions when the denominators are not like. But we aren't dealing with that right now. Continuing swiftly on. What's 7 plus 1? 8. 8 over 10. What uh, is the greatest common factor between 8 and 10? Well, factors of 8 include 1, 2, 4, 8. Factors of 10 include 1, 2, 5, 10. 2 is the greatest common factor between 8 and 10. So we divide both the numerator and denominator by 2. 8 divided by 2 equals to 4. 10 divided by 2 equals to 5. And we get 4 over 5. 4 and 5 do not share any common factors except 1. So it's as simplified as it could get. We continue. 5 over 8 minus 5 over 8. Well then. Step one, subtract numerators, use old denominator, 5 minus 5 equals to 0, we get 0 over 8. If it's 0 over anything, it's just 0. Just big fat 0, big fat old 0. 11 over 15 minus 8 over 15. Now, first step, subtract numerators, use old denominator. 11 minus 8 over 15 equals to 3 over 15. Now, 15 is a multiple of 3. So we're going to divide both of these by 3, and we get 1 over 5. 1 and 5 do not share any factors except 1. This is as simplified as it gets. Now, 9 over 10 plus 1 over 10. We add the numerators, 9 plus 1, use the old denominator, 10. So 9 plus 1 equals to 10. And the denominator is still there, so that's 10 over 10, which is equal to 1. If you want to take a break and do some practice problems, go ahead. Or you could go to the bathroom, or do anything that you do during breaks. But if you aren't going to take a break, or if you just came back, we're on Section 4, Problem Solving Strategies. Oh, I hate this one. I hate this one with a burning passion. Ugh. Okay. Unfortunately, I still have to teach you guys this. Al and Lee began the project of painting, actually repainting, and covering the seats of old dining room chairs. To recover one seat, they need a third of a square yard of fabric. How much fabric do they need to buy to recover the seats of seven chairs? What facts do we know? We know how many chairs there are, and we know how much is needed to repair each chair. That's really all we need. Because what we need to find is how much fabric do they need to buy to recover all these chairs. Now here's how you would go about acting this out. You'd go on the floor and sketch out or yeah sketch out nice a nice third of a yard square yard of just floor actually and then you would do this seven times this is a math class so we're not gonna do that because guess what guys one third plus one third plus one-third plus one-third. You haven't learned multiplication of fractions yet, so I have to do this like this. How many one-thirds is this now? Okay. 
Last one. Now, last time I checked, these are, well, 3 is equal to 3. So these are all fractions with like denominators, i.e., this equals to 1 plus 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 1 over 3 which is equal to 7 over 3 square yards. Wow! It's much easier than getting a yardstick and actually going on the floor. Especially if you're in a country that doesn't use yards. Now, check. Does this make sense? Yes, there are seven chairs and each chair takes up a third of a square yard. If you really wanted to do this another way, you could think a square yard is three feet by three feet, which is nine feet. A third of that is three feet. So three feet times seven equals to 21 square feet. And 21 square feet is two and a third square yards, which is equal to seven over three. I know it says solve, use the act it out strategy, but guess what? Sometimes you just don't have the people needed to act it out. This is one of the worst strategies you could possibly ever try to use because guess what? You aren't going to get the space to act it out on a test if you try to stand up during a test just randomly, the teacher will probably take your test paper and then put a big fat X on it because they think you're cheating. It actually does look like you're cheating. Imagine just standing up in the middle of a test and going like this or something around the lines of that. Act it out is even worse than drawing a picture because at least drawing a picture you could do it at your desk and not get accused of cheating, and it will actually help in that you can visualize it. The purpose of acting it out is for visualization and better see, well, just better visualization of it somewhere on a larger scale than the paper. Guess what, guys? Drawing can help you visualize. And guess which one the teacher is going to be uh, less happy about when you're in the middle of a test. You can't just stand up. Yeah, uh, now that I'm done with my rant, don't use this strategy. We're going to ignore this. I'm going to talk you through how to use it, but we're going to ignore this. Ignore. Got it? The girls, oh, Al and Lee, OK, need two thirds a can of paint to paint each chair. How many cans of paint will they need to paint all seven chairs? Okay, guys. Okay, okay, okay. If you're actually going to get cans of paint, no. Just no. So if, if you act this out, they'd probably ask you to... You actually just can't act this out without actually getting cans of stuff. It's better to just draw. Two thirds of cans of, that's a half. Two thirds of a cans of paint, and then just color. But it's still not efficient. So remember what I said about multiplication of fractions that we haven't learned yet? Well, we're just going to do addition. Two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two over the common denominator of 3 equals to 14 over 3, which means that they will need 14 divided by 3 equals to 4, remainder 2, so 4 and 2 thirds cans of paint to paint all 7 chairs. Well, that's much quicker than getting 4 and 2 thirds cans of God knows what. Anyhow. The girls found four more chairs, oh god, that each need a third square yard of fabric to cover the seats. How much more fabric do they need to buy? If you're going to repeat the 
third process on the floor? No! Don't do that! Just, no! Anyhow. One plus one plus one plus one over common denominator of three equals to four over three equals to one and one third more square yards of fabric. That's much quicker than getting a yardstick and lining it up on the floor and hoping to whatever you believe in that it works because guess what? Some measurements aren't that accurate. And guess what, guys? There's people out there that use the imperial system, which has yards, and there's people out there that don't use imperial system. Which means that they don't even have yardsticks on sale in the stores nearby. Now we're still dealing with these four new chairs that each need two thirds of a can of paint. How much more paint will they need? It asks for how much more paint the girls will need, which means that you don't actually need to add on the amount of paint from before. So how much more paint will they need? Well, four chairs and each needs two and a third of a can of paint, which is equivalent to two thirds plus two thirds, pardon my two over there, plus two thirds, plus two thirds. And uh, what have we learned about adding fractions? We don't add the denominator, we add all the numerators together, and we end up with two plus two plus two plus two equals to eight, eight over three. More cans of paint. Sia reads uh, two ninths of her book each day. If she starts reading on Monday, on what day will she complete her book? Okay. Well, if she reads on Monday, she reads two ninths, and then she reads an extra two ninths. On Tuesday, which means that she reads four ninths. And then she reads an extra two ninths on Wednesday. And it keeps going on. In reality, you could probably just do some division. But you know what? Let's do some minor acting it out, because why not? Yada, 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 yodo, yodo, yodo. She'll finish on Friday because, well, there's only one ninth of her book left for Friday and she reads two ninths a day, so. She'll finish on Friday. Friday. You should probably answer your questions in uh, full sentences, by the way. Just so you know. Jake lives three tenths of a mile from school. Oliver lives nine-tenths of a mile from school. Who lives further from school? How much further? Well, last time I checked, 0 0.9, nine-tenths, is bigger than 0 0.3, three-tenths. So, Oliver lives further. How much farther or further? By the way, farther is actually a word, guys. It's not a typo. <laughs> well, how much? Hum, time for some good old subtraction. If you guys actually are going to get out nine tenths of something and then take away three tenths by acting it out, no. Just, no, don't. Please don't. That's just. Takes too much time, takes too much of your life, takes too much effort, 
then it's much easier to just write it down. And guess what? Teachers aren't going to allow it on exams either, so. Sometimes if you don't learn to write things down, you fail. Sometimes life works that way. 3 over 5 of a mile further. That'd be 0 0.6 miles further. Or farther. Both words work. A puppy eats a fourth of a can of food at each meal. If he eats two times a day, how long will it take for him to eat five cans of food? Well, if he eats two times a day, that means that he eats one over four plus one over four cans a day, which is one plus one over four, which is two over four, which simplifies to one over two. So he eats half a can of food a day. Now how many half a cans is in five cans? Well, there's ten half a cans in five cans, so it's just, he takes ten days. Now if you want to take a break and do some practice problems, go ahead. This is not how you write a cursive S, guys. Cursive S is more of this. But, well, 